Um, so what we are going to do, um, this is our, well, it isn't, it, it, it isn't, it isn't our first podcast, is it? We've, we've tried it before. It hasn't really came to much success. We've, yeah, we sort we of did it once. It was like, yeah, we're going to do it every week. And then we forgot about it for seven months. Um, yeah. So <laughs> we're going to try again. Um, and we thought, what better thing to talk about um, for our first podcast that's in a, a festival theatre? Um, theatre, why, why not? Yeah, why not talk about theatre and, and us? It, yeah. not, not in a... That sort of, sounded very self-indulgent. Yeah. We're yeah. going to talk about us. This, this podcast is all about me. Yeah. Strap um, in, put your seatbelt on. I'm going to go on a roller coaster. 40 minutes of us. <laughs> Um, so um, what we're going to do is we're going to, um, I don't know if you watched it, but we had a, called, um, um, oh, is it, is it, oh, it wasn't, sorry. We, <laughs> we had a, um, <laughs> my Wi-Fi's terrible. <laughs> we had a uh, video up uh, yesterday at 3.30 mm-hmm. called Theatre Talking Thespians. That's a tongue twister. Theatre Talking Thespians. And basically, we um, gave out a set um, list of questions to some of our actor friends and people in the industry that we know, um, and they answered them, and we put them in a lovely video. And we thought, why don't we do the same? Yeah, why not? Why don't we answer them questions? Gave them out, we might as well answer them ourselves. Yeah. And it definitely wasn't us panicking, thinking, what on earth can we talk about? (laughs) Yes. It that definitely going, wasn't the case. Doing shit. What yeah. this? This? Oh, it's twelve o'clock. Can we sweat? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you've you've well, you've broken that rule now. I've broken. You? That's that's. Sue me. In the water now, isn't it? Sue me. Do you? Speaking of Sue, there's an interview with Will and Sue coming later on today. <laughs> very very good. Hey. You um, are you are the James Carden of Beast Town. You really are. That was wonderful work. Um, right, so the question number question. one. Yes, the first question. Um, should we take... Well, well, we'll both answer them. But well, I'll ask you and you ask me. Yeah, yeah. But we'll, we'll both answer every question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. So, I'll start. I'll, I'll start. What does theatre mean to you, Owen? What does theatre mean to me? Um, a, a lot, really. Mm-hmm. Not to get too deep into it, but... It's one of them things where if if I didn't do theatre or I'm not an actor or I didn't do shows or I didn't direct or I didn't have this company, I really don't know where my career or my life would, <laughs> would go. Like, it's like my, my life has sort of been shaped around the theatre, like, and if, it, if there was no such thing as theatre, I really don't know what I would do in my life. Like, I mean, be a fireman, like, work at Tesco? I, I don't know. I, I mean, I'm imagining you as a fireman, Owen, and I can't say it's really... The image in my head isn't really working. It's, it's the image in my fun. head's more like um, like a YMCA sort of character. Okay, yeah. If you uh, that's what I thought. <laughs> that's no, no, no. I'm not saying that's what I want. Your words. That's that... why I want. <laughs> Listen, I didn't say it. You said it. I, I didn't say a word. I just mean, like in a in a fireman's cl- um, that's no. I yeah. didn't mean to say that. <laughs> okay. But <laughs> back on the question, um, <laughs> it, it it means an awful lot because, like, like I said before, I've shaped my whole life around the theatre and the concept of theatre and being in theatre. And going to the theatre. Um, so yeah, that's what it, that's what theatre means to me. It means a bloody awful lot, and mm-hmm. it's it's a staple part of my life. And yeah. other people don't like it. Fair enough, but yeah. But I think there'll be a lot of people listening that will share that exact same. Yeah, it's hard exactly. to explain. Like it's it's hard to explain. It's one of them careers where it's hard to explain what you do. Mm. Like you know, you ask a policeman what it does I'm a policeman you ask a I don't know a fireman a fireman what he does I'm a fireman um, you ask someone who's into theatre like or oh, is involved in the theatre industry what you're doing it's hard to explain and people don't get it sometimes mm. you, are, well, is, you always get the line um, if you say you're an actor you always get that line have you been in Corrie? yeah have you been, have you been, have you been, have you been in Corrie? have you done this? and then you say no and then you'll say well you're not really an actor then are you? 
No. It's not that. All right. <laughs> yeah. It's one of them. It's it's that annoying thing, but it's hard to explain what you do because yeah. It, it's it's a yeah. It's very unique mm-hmm. industry, I think. Well, I know it's a very unique industry. I mean, yeah, it means an awful lot to me. That's the answer to my question. I'm gonna throw it back at you, Mister Walsh. Well, what the hell does thirty mean to you? I'm, I know I'm not gonna beat that because that's a beautiful answer. Well. But, um, I think theatre is a couple of things, really. I think um, it depends. It depends who you are in the theatre. So, I'm an audience member, and I'm somebody that works in the theatre. Um, as an audience member, it's escapism. It's a different perspective every time. Um, it's a story that you are passionate about. Sometimes that you that you want to hear, and and the opposite end of that, it's if you're an actor, if you're a creative, a writer, director, producer, whatever, it's it's stories that you want to tell. It's um, it's stories that you're passionate bringing to the fold. Um, it's 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 also a hobby. Like I mean, I always say that, that like my not motto, but sort of the way I go about things when it comes to this industry. I always think that. I started when I was like seven years old and I, I just went to a local acting class. It was a hobby. And the minute it stops still being a hobby, that's when I'll quit. That's when I'll leave it. If it's not fun anymore, there's no point doing it. I've been lucky enough to, for it, you know, to, to become more than a hobby. Mm-hmm. But over all of that, it, all, it always, it always is and always will be a hobby because I, I love doing it. I love, I love you know, I, I enjoy it. I enjoy the social side of it. I enjoy the, the idea that you can be whoever you want to be. Not, and I, don't, I don't mean that in a, a sort of cliche way of, you know, I, I can be my real self. I mean that as in you can be a character on stage that nobody would ever think you are. So say, for example, I like to think of myself as quite a, a nice person that isn't very argumentative or... Um, Debatable. Nice. Well, well, you know, that's my, that's my personal point of view. I'm joking, I'm joking. Well, and you're wrong if you say that, all right? <laughs> Disagree um, then. <laughs> um, but I, I, that's how I like to think of myself. But then I get the opportunity to play somebody really horrible on the stage. Now, I can be somebody that's completely a, a different world to mine. And that's so cool that you, you can do that and you can leave it at the stage door. And you can go down to the bar and you can be back to normal again. I think that's so cool. And what other job can you do that when you're, you're in a different world every single time? I think that's so cool. Um, I, there's, there's so much more I could say for that answer. Um, but I feel like it would just be me waffling on for hours. So I'm going to leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely answer, Mr. Moore. Thank you. Thank you. Um, um, go are, on. You, are you asking it or am I asking it? We'll, we'll keep the same order, I think, shall we? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah, because then otherwise it'll just be like me talking for hours and my mouth's mm. already getting really dry. No one wants that. Yeah, nobody wants that. Um, Owen, next yes. question. What is your dream role and why? Uh, well, it's not a fireman in the YMCA. <laughs> um, a dream role. You'll see, I'm from a very... Yeah, we're going to have very contrasting answers. Yeah, I'm from a very, very musical theatre background. Um, and a very a very different background to, to Joe. Um, yeah, we both do like the same things. But um, my dream role... I've, I, I think about this a lot, to be honest. I think about this answer a lot. And it's, it changes. Because... As you, as you grow as an actor, like there, there was a time when I was obsessed with playing the, the sort of the, the, the comedy, the sort of the, the, the comic yeah. relief role. Or, or a lot of uh, shows have like narrator roles, if you will. Um, a lot of things like that. I've, I've always had sort of a, a desire to sort of play the, you know, the boring um, romantic lead that male yeah. leads. But I've grown up to, to, to fall out of that, I, I, I personally think 
like romantic male and female leads, I personally think they're quite boring. Yeah. Um, because they only have that what they only have that story. That's all they have. I think uh, my my opinion on them sort of roles is they're in re- they're really important to do. Mm-hmm. Um, they're not my cup of tea, but I think that the one of the more important roles you can have the chance to perform. Yeah. Uh, for for you as an actor, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah, it's, it, it it means a lot to take them roles, but I feel like with them roles because they're so poignant and so this is the character, this is the story. You can't really go as far as you'd want to with it. Mm. So I, I, I mean, my, my all-time ultimate dream role would, um, would be the, the, the Phantom in Phantom of the Opera. That is... That's interesting. That is... And it never used to be. It always used to be um, standard musical theatre, Valjean in Les Mis. It was <laughs> always that. But my dream role... It, but it changes. Like, I'll listen to... I listen to Cats and really, really want to be um, Mr. Mistopheles, mm. or I, I, I listen to Wicked. I want to be Fiero. Like there's, there's, there's so many on the list, and they're all so different. Um, not that I have a list, <laughs> <laughs> but no, my, my my dream role is the Phantom. Um, bottom yeah. line, because He's the most multi-dimensional character I could I can think of. Like he, he, there's, there's so much there, and I've watched so many actors play it, and I've done so much research in in just out of not of sort of my desire of wanting to play, but just sort of out of curiosity. Like hmm. I've read I've read the original Phantom book by Gaston Leroux, like it, it, and that that whole story in itself really really has stuck with me um, and it means a lot and yeah it's I'd like to have the chance to play it because I just I'd want to discover more about it actually doing it that's, that's in, it's so interesting you say that as well because obviously I'd like I, I I watched you in Phantom of the Opera not uh, as the Phantom though not as so. the Phantom but I watched you in Phantom of the Opera yeah did I, I, I mean the answer might likely be no but even just doing that that play, well, uh, musical, um, even though you wasn't that character, did it change your perspective on the Phantom at all? Totally. Totally, totally, totally. Yeah. It, seeing another person play it, makes you, it, it adds another, um, it, all the emotions that that actor brought to it. Mm. It adds that. And I think being in it, because I play Pianji, the, the um, opera tenor, um, being in it as like a sort of the principal cast, but in it as like a step back and watching rehearsals, you, you, I learned so so much about that show and about the characters from sitting there in the rehearsal room. And obviously, as the character, like when you're on stage w- with the Phantom, or you're, you're you're telling the story in the show, when you're in it. You, you, you feel certain things. There's just something about that show that I, like I'm just in awe of. I, I, I mean, I, I, I'll, I'll be completely honest, and you know this anyway, I don't really understand that show, to be honest with you. Um, I, I, don't I didn't. I, I, it... But there is something very interesting about that character. You know, he's such a... But he, uh, and he, he's, he's a very classic typical theatre character isn't it at the end of the day you know what I mean he's a man yeah. that's hiding from his past he's in love with a woman he's in love. Can't have you know there's all these these different layers to him that is a classic theatre character you know what I mean I mean in, in many senses he's, he's Romeo and Romeo and Juliet he's, yeah. you know, he's hidden away he's hiding and he's in love with Romeo uh, he's in love with Romeo <laughs> he's in love with Juliet you know what I mean he's in love with, with the wrong person in the yeah film. yeah um, so and, he, and he's and he's fighting, you know, he's he's fighting for that girl as well. Yeah. Um, and and at the end of the day, I mean, when I watched it, it's. It, 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 I know this sounds ridiculous, me saying this, but when I watched that uh, Phantom of the Opera, I I'm gonna laugh when I say this. I always think that character is Shrek. 
I hear that. Is Shrek like that? Is, that is, I wouldn't be surprised if Shrek, if that film was based on Phantom of the Opera. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's a massive, massive backstory behind it and a whole book that was written like previously, but, but like a, a, a characters like that, like it, it's the, the romantic lead in a way. Um, but there's, there's something there to, 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 to distort your perspective on it. Like yeah. Beauty and the Beast, it's literally Beauty and the Beast. It's like yeah, Shrek. of course. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. There's, there's, there's a man in love with a woman on the surface. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. What's wrong? Oh, he's, he's visually a bit... Yeah, yeah. Uh, not nice to look at on the eye. Oh, right. Well, there's the problem. And then go <laughs> discover yeah, yeah. that. It, it's yeah. that sort of... At least it, it, it's not even the fact that he's vis- visually a problem for people. He's an outcast. Yeah. That's, that's what he is. He's an he's, He does bad things, but he's got good intentions. And also, as a note on that, to perform any um, Andrew, Log- Andrew Logwebber musical is a dream role. Just putting that out there. Best composer of all time. My favourite composer. No one's better than him. There we are. That's controversial. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I have nothing to say on that. <laughs> that means nothing to me. Andrew Logwebber is the Best, best musical theatre composer anywhere. Uh, he, he, he could be for all I know. He is. Just, just take I, my word for it. Yeah, I'll take word for it. I'll God. take word for it. Right. Enough of me nattering on. <laughs> Joe, what's your dream role and why? Oh, good one. Um, this is a really good question. Um... Yeah. I, it's it's a funny one this one I think again there's two answers like the last one um, a dream role for me isn't necessarily a, an actual role that's you know that's in my mind that's created I think a role could be something that is either something so far in your comfort zone that it's just such a joy to play so for example yeah. I played uh, Willie Mossop in Hobson's Choice and that character is a bit dim, he's a bit dopey, and he sits about eating food. That is that, that is, is me. Yeah. That is me. So <laughs> that is so much fun to play because you, you, obviously I was I was acting, I was still trying, but I, I I understood that character. I was there with him. I got it. Yeah. At the same time, another dream role is something completely opposite to you. Like I was, you know, saying to you before, the idea that you can be somebody completely opposite. Yeah. And I think. With that in mind, I have to see my dream role, which is really interesting because uh, if you don't know, me and Owen, um, we met in school. Um, we did indeed. And then we did, um, we did, um, what's it called, sick farm together as well. Yeah. Um, and we did King Lear. We did? That's a throwback. I, I, I liked Shakespeare, don't get me wrong. Um, but at the time, maybe I didn't really appreciate that show as much as I should have done. And the role I played was Cornwall. Uh, if you know Cornwall, he's just, he is the worst. Like, he is the worst person. Um, and I loved playing him at, playing him at the time. Mm-hmm. I look back on it now, and I think, oh, there's so... Even though we didn't do all of it, we did sort of extracts of it. There's yeah. just so much more. I could have done with that. And there's so much more now, even, even though it was, you know, in the grand scheme of things, it was only a few years ago. Uh, me as an actor, I've grown so much since then. Mm-hmm. So there's so much I'd want to bring to that character now. So I guess that would be my dream role because it's, it's sort of, I've had my chance doing it once and I feel like I butchered it. And I probably didn't, but in my head, that's, that's how yeah. I feel. So I, I just want to do it again. That, that's interesting, actually. Yeah. Because... From you saying that now, I remember when we did Blood Brothers at college. Yeah, yeah. We were we were the two brothers. Yeah. I've I, many times I've thought, God, I'd love to I'd love to go back and 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 do and play that being Blood Brothers again. Yeah. Because I was uh, the Scouse one. God, what? It's Mickey and Eddie in it. But we, Mickey and Eddie. Yeah. Mickey, Mickey's the Scouse one, isn't he? Yeah. Um, I'd love to do that. Like, I'd love to just. But it's interesting because I think a lot of your dream roles come from. Roles you've already done because you know yeah. them the best. Do you know what a I mean? Lot, a lot of them are, yeah, like you said, like roles that you've done. Yeah. You know you can do better now. Yeah, yeah. You know, if, if I had my time again to do 
you know, to 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 do every role that I've done. Yeah, I'd love to do it again because I know even if I, even if I did it last week, I've still learned something as an actor in that week. Even if it's just something somebody said, if it's something somebody said while I've while I've been leaving the theatre, if it's something I've dreamt that night, anything can make you a better. It all yeah, adds to so, it. Any role that you've done before, I think is a dream role in some weird way because you just want to do it again. I, 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 I don't know about you, but there's never been a role that I've just sort of gone, oh, God, thank God that's over. Like, I'm, yeah, I'm, same. I'm, off I go. You know? It's also different. Most embarrassing moments on stage? I really don't know, um, really? which no, is really know. boring. Well, I, I definitely have, mm. but I suppose I think I'm, limi- I'm limiting my answer to me trying to find a really embarrassing, but I, I suppose embarrassing in sort of unexpected moment on stage or mm. I, ooh, I, I do sort of, I, I do feel because I think it's more, I've had a lot of funny moments on stage. I don't know if I nef- necessarily have yeah. Embarrassing. I've had bizarre. I've had strange. I've had like ridiculous, funny moments on stage, but not as much embarrassing. I, I can't. Um, so yeah, that's my boring answer. I, I I might think of something later on, yeah. but for now, I don't have anything. Um, so I'm going to flip it back to you, Mr. Walsh. I have loads. I have loads of funny, embarrassing stories. I bet you are. Um, so a couple that spring to mind. Um, when we're doing Hobson's Choice. Um, we, we had this big dramatic scene at the end um, and the idea is is that some of the family members have to walk out the house mm-hmm. quite dramatically as well so they go to walk out the house they pull the door and the doorknob just comes off <laughs> and we, us and the entire cast is on and we all just sort of we have that look of ah oh, shit because there's <laughs> no other way they can go off and bless him um, I think it was Scott uh, it was uh, it was playing um, Obson. He, he he just went right. Well, you have to use the back door then, won't you? <laughs> and we just thought, like, just just what, and but like it wasn't like right at the very end of the show. There was still quite a bit left, uh-huh. so we just had to work around it the entire time. The door being completely uh, yeah, just we, the door was there. Just the doorknob came off, and one of the girls just had it in their hand, and we were all just like, oh no, like um, yeah, uh, not as much. <laughs> It wasn't, well, it was on stage, but it was in a dress rehearsal. Uh, I did a new Don Fades for the second time. Now, the, the, the girl, well, the woman on costume, Karen, she's a lovely, lovely woman. Um, lovely Karen. Um, and the first time I did it, I was, I was just my, my, my weight at the time. Um, so obviously she got me these pants um, that fitted my waist and whatnot. Not a problem. Um, then I'd, I'd do it a year later, and I'll be honest with you. Uh, obviously, um, Joe's packed on a couple of a uh, couple of the old pounds, and he let, let himself go. <laughs> yeah, I let himself go a little bit. <laughs> but I, I don't. Uh, in my head, I, I don't. I don't think I have. Do you know what I mean? I, I'm yeah. not, I I don't realise this. <laughs> so when she says, um, "Is everyone the same size as last time?" and I just turn around, knowing full well that I'm probably not. But I was like, "Yep, not a problem." <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I, I, we eventually get these pants and I, I, I get them on and they just do not fit at all <laughs> right but it's too late to get more she's got these pants so she's like right we'll just have to sort of spread them as wide as we can you know um so she does that and eventually they're just about fitting anyway mm-hmm. we get to dress rehearsal and there's a lot of movement in that in that piece mm-hmm. um so <laughs> there's one moment where I leaned down and, and this is in the dressing room or something as I leaned down I could just hear this <laughs> and basically like it just split on my ass <laughs> the pants just split on my ass and I just heard I just heard like some of the cast members like sort of like sort of whispering to each other going are these pants just slipped on his ass <laughs> what's happened and then like I'd sort of like stood back up and I thought it might have just been like a little tear but it turns out it was this like entire flap <laughs> Just, just yeah. this little yeah, hold the hold and my ass cheek. <laughs> so it's like a nice little breeze coming in. Um, um, dream actor to perform with and why? Oh, are we, are we are we 
are we saying stage or are we saying screen? Are we saying both? What are you allowed? I think you could you can sort of talk both. I think. Cool. Um, again, this is I, I I don't really know. Who would I love to to? Tell you what, um, Joe Walsh. No, <laughs> um, one of them would, and this is quite sort of left field and really nothing to do with what we've been talking about. But one of them would definitely have to be Ricky Gervais. <laughs> that's that's a fair answer. Um, in, in anything, yeah, like fair answer. I mean, I know a lot of people maybe don't see him as an as an actor, but he's. he's a I don't know. I think his work in Afterlife is just something special. He's, I mean, he's working on in everything he's done. Yeah, I think he's an incredible actor when he when he does the right stuff. When he does his own, you know, a lot of his yeah. own, he's brilliant. I think he's a fantastic actor. Yeah. Maybe not so suited to the stage, but no, I, I for think screen, he's he's, he's yeah, he's phenomenal. I'd love to stand there and just watch him. Watch him interact interact yeah. with him in a scene. Um, also, very very left field, um, but Phantom related, but not merely because he played the Phantom. But Michael Crawford, oh yeah, another fantastic um, comedic actor. Um, when he did some others, do have him. Yeah, it's yeah. one of the most. Amazing! It's just a, it's a, a staple British sitcom. Like when you hear "Ooh, Betty," like yeah. you instant, you know exactly who's saying it. You know exactly what show it is. And I think he introduced a lot of physical comedy at that time when it wasn't really there in the industry. Mm. Um, and like a, a lot of. He, he, he did all of the um, get my words out. He did all of his own stunts, a lot of his own stunts on on some of his and and him to play a character like that, and then he originated the role of the Phantom. It's a it's a completely it just shows the the versatility he has. He's got a fantastic voice as well. Mm. Um, I'd say it'd be Ricky Gervais on screen, and it probably have to be Michael Crawford on the stage because whether it's something serious or some, something comedic he, he's a very big inspiration for me oh yeah that's, that's a great answer yeah thank you very much great answer um your turn who do you dream actor performing on stage you can say me if you want to i have i have a couple i have a couple that's Between the two, um, and I, I tell you what, I'll, I'll put it this way, and I know I know all of them do a, a bit of both, so you mm. know, take it as you will, whether it's stage or screen. There's four British actors that I hugely, hugely, hugely admire, and have inspired me. So mm-hmm. I'd say uh, Stephen Graham uh, is a fan fantastic actor and he's he's got this uh, really beautiful honesty about him whenever he's on a uh, screen where you just completely believe him and it feels so so natural it feels like the words are coming out of his mouth for the first time and i think any actor that does that is just amazing mm-hmm. um russell toby i think especially on stage some of his work on stage is brilliant uh, and he's so underrated as well yeah you know and you look at the versatility he's got where even if it's just he's in for a passing moment in Gavin and Stacey even if he's just in a passing moment in Pride um, the, but then the job lot as well the what yeah the job, the yeah, job lot I'm, I'm, see he, this is what I mean he, he, it's interesting with him because he, he does all these different comedies but then you watch him on stage and he's a different beast yeah I don't think people realise how talented that man is Um I, I, one of my favourite series is him and her 
which is such a beautiful, beautiful series. And it's so funny and charming. And yeah. all it is is these two, this, this couple, uh, this, this young couple, they don't have jobs, they don't bother, they're living off the council, and it's just them two in bed. And it's so beautiful, and it's so funny. Mm-hmm. But again, you just completely believe him. And I, I know I keep saying the word funny. There's moments where he just breaks your heart, and you're like, yeah, because that's I've done that. I, yeah. I understand how you're feeling right now. You've got, you have a lot of empathy with his Yeah, Yeah, he's, he's, that's, characters. that's the perfect thing I'd say for Russell Tovey. He's so likeable. Mm-hmm. so likeable you're always on his side um, and uh, the word versatility I used before and I think the most versatile man uh, in sort of in, the, in this industry is uh, Steve Pemberton I think Steve Pemberton is, is just sublime you're watching side number nine and it's a different character every day and it's either something I keep saying the word funny it's even something really funny it's even really heartfelt it can be so dark and sinister and he's unrecognisable every single time and it's crazy because you know I, I don't know if you've watched Inside the Night but no. it's Steve Pemberton and Reece Smith have created, honestly mate it's, it's one of the best things ever on telly um, and it'll blow your mind when you watch it and the idea is it's these half an hour different story a different genre of, of, of uh, a TV. But the, the shtick is, is that each one has a twist at the end. And you, you, honestly, mm-hmm. even though you know the twist is coming, you never figure out the twist. Now, <laughs> Steve and Reese write the, pe- uh, write the shows. I'm pretty sure they direct quite a few of them as well. Uh, and they're always in them. They're always in these, these pieces, whether it's like a, a role that's in it for, you know, like a sort of subplot role or it's the main character, they're always yeah. in it. And Steve Pemberton, I wish he as well to, to refer to him, but for me, Steve Pemberton, he just melts into a role every yeah. single week. And you forget, even though the, the, this is their thing, you forget that they're in it, which is crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, I, I, I mean, don't get me wrong, this show went to the shitter like, after a couple of series, but you, you watch him in Benidorm compared to how he's in real life. Yeah. I mean, I mean, Benny Dom was my first experience with Steve Pemberton. So I just presumed that's how he was as a person. I just presumed yeah. hard acting. Then when you watch him in interviews and you're like, Jesus Christ, you're nothing like him. But you get it so accurately. I, I just think it blows my mind every time I watch Benny Dom, which I know it sounds silly, but the acting that goes into that is just brilliant. <laughs> yeah. It's so brilliant because you, you're like, you are not him at all. You, you, you're invested in it and, he, and he's invested in the character. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then my last one is, and I, I'm leaving last because he's in a series at the moment that everybody's watching called White Lines, is Daniel Mays. This man, right, I, I honestly, right, I, I, I don't understand it, how he's, he's been so overlooked for so long. Mm-hmm. He's, he's been going around for years and years and years and years and years. And he's fine, like, a, like everyone's like, oh, he's, you know, who's this new, this new talent, Daniel Mays, and it's like, well, he's been around for years, and he's so <laughs> talented, um, and I think the thing with Daniel is, he can, he can play horrible, and vicious, and nasty, but then, I've seen him in other stuff, where he's just utterly charming, yeah, you just turn it on and off, like, and they're the four answers, and if I ever, ever, ever got the chance, to work with any of them four, I'd, take my clothes off, run around naked and pass out. So there you go. Weird, that's what you did when you got to work with me. Um, yeah. <laughs> so. Yes, I definitely remember doing that. <laughs> and that's why we're called two in a bed. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> anyway. All right, well, question number five. Oh, you're, you're asking me, aren't you? Yeah, question number five. Best piece of theatre you have watched ever? And why? That is an impossible question. I don't have a singular answer for it. No, um, I can I, I can name like a top ten in no particular order that that, that just shows that have blown me away. So I'm going to try and answer the question because it would annoy me if I didn't answer it. Um, there's a lot of shows um, 
Phantom of the Opera, obviously. Hamilton, stunning. Um, Miss Saigon, the 2014 revival in the West End, um, stunning. Les Mis, stunning. Um, tell you what, Come From Away, stunning. I'm dying to watch that. I know, you that, know I'm not like a massive musical geek, but that, that looks That great. is phenomenal. I'd love to see that. I'm trying to think, like, and the show's like, for, for example, like I've seen Wicked like six or seven times at least. It's not my favourite show in the whole world, mm. but it, it never fails to amaze me. There's just something about it. And I've, I've seen it all over, like, I've seen it in Liverpool, I've seen it in Manchester, I've seen it in the West End. Like, I've seen, I've seen different productions of it. And that show never fails to amaze me. So there's a few. Um, I, can't give, I can't give one answer. I, yeah, no, I agree. And, the, I'm and there have been loads of shows that I've missed out. Yeah. Me with... With, with yours, what's the best piece of theatre you've ever seen? Right, well, I think because you've done such a, like, a sort of large range uh, like list, you know, of mm-hmm. shows over the years, I'm going to pick three shows that I've seen, re- re- I say recently, in the past year or so. Yeah. Um, one of which, I'll be honest with you, I can't remember the name of. Um, but we'll get to that one in a minute because that's an interesting one. Um, but two that stand out to me is one night in Miami um, at home theatre and it was uh, Nottingham Playhouse produced it. I, I like shows and I, a film, TV, whatever, where nothing's happening, but everything is happening. I, I love things that's all just set in the same room, the same look. There's so much you can do with that. Um, so the, one night in Miami, is, the idea is it's, it's just, it's a show set in one hotel room um and it's about these really influential um black american idols really so sam cook uh, malcolm x um cassius clay aka muhammad ali and somebody else and i feel really bad for not remembering them but uh, i think he was like a baseball player and the idea is is that they all meet in this room together um and it, apparently it did happen i think but nobody knows what was said inside this room and it's it's their version of events I, i'm pretty sure that's how it goes mm-hmm. but the way they do it is just ah oh, amazing to watch it's so incredible um one the acting was excellent two the stage was brilliant um the the writing was ah oh, out of this world and what i loved is the even though it's self set in this one room, they take you out of it once in a while. So, for example, if they're talking about Muhammad Ali fighting, all of a sudden the stage, the stage would become like a boxing ring. Yeah, you know what I mean. And then the best moment of it was when Sam Cooks, um, he would be talking about singing uh, about like sort of maybe a gig he did, and all of a sudden this auditorium becomes the gig, and he will jump off the stage, and he will be in the crowd, and he will be singing. And I love Sam Cooke anyway. I've grown up listening to Sam Cooke mm-hmm. from that. And then there's this beautiful moment where he, where he sings A Change Is Gonna Come, which is such an influential song. And it's just, it's incredible. It's, it, it is such, it, and it, I, I love moments where you can feel the whole theatre sort of go, oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? Whether, whether it's, we're all finding that hilarious, whether it's, we all find that really sad, whether it's, we jump out of our seats because something scared us. If we're all doing something as unison, as an audience, I find that so cool. Um, so yeah, so th- that's one. Um, another one, which I saw quite recently, uh, was Light Falls by Simon Stevens at the Royal Exchange. Again, so beautiful. Like the characters are so beautiful. Simon Stevens, the way he writes the characters are just excellent. Mm-hmm. Um, and to, you know, to bring this, this cast of actors in and everyone was top notch. The staging was incredible. It was just, it it, I say the staging was incredible. It was nothing. There was no staging, really. There was nothing at all there. Mm-hmm. But that was the beauty of it. You know, that it, I, I love shows that don't need to rely on, on, you know, a massive, you know, set of lights and, a, and 10 different sets coming in, in and yeah. out. You, see. you can do nothing. a lot with a little. Exactly, yeah. And, it, and they proved that. Um, so that, that was such a 
beautiful, well-told story. And again, there was nothing too complex about it. There was nothing too complex to the story. Um, yet there was so much going on. Um, and it allows when the characters even more. You know, there's so much that you, you learn about these characters because everyone gets a chance to shine. Um, so yeah, that was really good. And another one that really just still just stand out to me was when me and Owen went um, watching a show at, um, oh my God, uh, what's it called? Um, the Abandoned Place. Uh, Antwerp. Antwerp Mansion, yeah. Um, oh my God, what was that show called? Bad. But yeah, Bad, that was it, was it Bad? Bad, wow, my it memories. Was, yeah, it was part of the GM Fringe. Better than I thought it was. Um, and I can't remember the third company. 2019, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can't remember the third company. And the idea was, is it was this, it was um, Antwerp Mansion, so completely abandoned building sort of thing. And you, you go in this abandoned building and there's a bar um, and it's just these two people behind the bar and uh, during the show they're serving you drinks, they're talking to you and honestly, I'm, and you'll back me up with this, it, again, so simple but brilliant. Yeah, like the concept of it, it was just yeah. two people, two people, two people a chat. written and, and it was written specifically because these two actors had it's genuine true stories yeah it's it, the idea was it was it was bar stories so you know either they're telling each other these stories or that they're telling the audience these stories of horrific bar stories and they're inspired by the director or writers um you know um experiences and also the actors experiences as well yeah. so it was very meta and it was just it, it oh it was just great i loved it it was so it simple. was really good it was <laughs> and it, You'd have like a raffle ticket and you'd go up to the bar and you'd, you'd order a drink and stuff. Yeah. And you'd be serving it. Yeah, I love immersive stuff like that. Um, it was, but it, it wasn't was overkill. Really it. funny as well. Really, really funny. Oh, I remember funny. that. Yeah. Really, really funny. And it was, it was something that I'd never experienced before, like in theatre. And, and for that reason, you've, you've kind of got to say, oh, yeah, fair play. Yeah. You know? um, next question, I guess. Which is the final question, I think. the final question. We've, we've definitely ran over time, haven't we, But We definitely have. I think it's been very interesting and insightful. So. Yes. <laughs> um, I guess this is going to be a short answer anyway. So what is the one piece of advice you'd give to a, another actor? Now, this answer would change depending on who the actor was. Are we saying like to like a young actor who's like, are we saying like an older, like? Yeah, I guess, I guess it does depend on, you know, um, if you have a couple, you know, we'll bend, we'll bend the rules slightly. Yeah. yeah, we'll bend. I mean, <sighs> it's interesting because we've seen, we've seen the video that, um, you know, all the other actors, we know that, that you, know, yeah. they, you know, we put this video together. I'm and I'm trying not to. To steal anything from yes. his head, but they, you know, they've worded it perfectly. Actually, so yeah. it's, it's a bit of a difficult one to answer, isn't it? I have to give one. If I was going to answer some advice, what would it be? Um, um, oh God, um, don't do it. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> cut by your head. <laughs> no, it wouldn't be that. I think. <laughs> It would be throw yourself into the deep end cool. of everything. Mm -hmm. That being of your research, of your training, of, of a character, of a story, of a project. Because if you go in to the deep end straight away, you're, you're invested in it and you, you if, if you're on the surface of like a character for example or a project you, you drift away you drift away from the intention you drift away from the the, the, the epicenter of of it if you go straight to that epicenter you go right down to the deep end straight away 
that's when you discover more. I think especially that piece of advice I think is, is especially important with characters and roles in research. Yeah. Um, obviously the rehearsal process is important for discovering a lot about characters. I feel like it's, you, you just got to throw yourself in. If you hold yourself back too much, um, you hold yourself back once, you hold yourself back again and again and again and again. Yeah. Gradually, you won't get very far. You might get to where you want to be, but it might take three times as long. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think that would be it. And also, be nice. Someone already said that on the video. Yeah. I'm going to say that again. I think it's very, very, very important. Not even just to like be nice to like really important people or like be nice. No, you should give the. Be, the yeah, the, or like, be nice yeah. just in case yeah. you work with them again. You should be nice anyway. You yeah. Shouldn't, you shouldn't have to go, oh, I'll be nice to this person because we yeah, might you want to turn on your nice. Just, just be like, why would you be an asshole? Mm. Just be nice. And even if nothing comes of it, just. Just be pleasant, because yeah. that's that it makes the whole process and the whole journey far more enjoyable. Um, yeah. So there we are. That's my advice. Dive into the deep end. Don't be an arsehole. Fair enough, and I agree. Um, I've got four really. Bloody yeah. Hell. So I have one that was <laughs> drilled into me since I was a little kid uh, by Will, and that is William uh, Shakespeare. Pardon. Will Shakespeare? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good old, uh, good old Willy, Willy Shake. <laughs> um, yeah, so it was, it was drilled into me since I was a little kid from Will, and that is, um, if you're an actor in rehearsal, always come with an offer. Uh, I think we spoke about it in our Q&A, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, always come with an offer. Um, because... I think a lot of actors have the mentality of the directors have this vision and I, I'm not, I don't want to screw up their vision. You know, I'm just going to, I'm just going to go where the director tells me to stand. I'm going to go where the director tells me to sit and that'll be it. Yeah, don't do yeah. that because the director, and you know, I, I, I mean, I direct stuff like speaking from experience and I, I, I might be the only director that does this, but I'm pretty sure I'm not. I've never met a director who says otherwise. They never have it all planned out in the head how they exactly how they totally. want to. And even if they do have a vision for it, then they're welcome to offers. They're welcome because at the end of the day, you all work as a team and the director wants to make it as good of a show as possible. Mm-hmm. So if you come with an offer that is better than their initial idea, or even not different, not, yeah, exactly. not necessarily better. But yeah, a exactly. lot of the time, like obviously, we've both sort of directed shows and stuff like, like you're saying, like there's. Like you said, the director never comes in with with the full show in their mind. They can't. That's they, impossible. And they expect that from the actor because that's what should be expected. Yeah. Like it should. I think it should always be a fifty-fifty. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to go too much into that one because I I, I know we talked on it anyway in the in the uh, the Q and A, which uh, is on at seven which, o'clock tonight. Yeah. If, um, so, uh, yeah, that is something. Do listen to that one. Well, listen to them all, but that one yeah. is so insightful. It's really really interesting. As is everything else, but that, I really do recommend that one, especially if you're an actor or a writer or director or whatever. Um, my second piece of advice I got given off a director called Emma Bird when I was working on New Dawn. Um, and it, it's a really simple one, uh, but I think just the way she worded it was perfect. And it was, if you don't have, if, if you're not getting work, create your own work. Couldn't agree you know more. Um, that's the exact reason we set up this company. That's the exact reason I started writing shows. Um, you know, I don't think you should ever rest on your laurels. I don't ever think you should just sit back and wait for an offer. You should, you should be, if you, if you're not reaching out to people saying, listen, you know, putting yourself out there, just make your own work. Yeah. And that is how people will notice you, I think. Um, and also it's, it's really fun. Like it's really fun doing that. You know, I have so much fun creating my own work because once in a while I get to be in these shows that I create. And I get, I get to create characters that I'd love to play. You know what I mean? That, um, that's the thing. Like, you sit there resting on your laurels going, oh, I wish I could play this dream character I've got in my head. Mm. Write it down. Write, write, down. write yeah. down your dream character yeah. so you can play it. Yeah. Right um, 
and the, the, these other two, um, I guess, I guess aren't really sort of to do with, you know, being an actor like, um, um, what's the word? Um, sort of go, going through the rehearsal process, you know. Mm -hmm. um, this is more just like generally. Again, and it sort of goes along the, the lines of be nice and stuff like that. Um, he's, when you, when, you, when you finish a show, don't be that dickhead who's like, I can't, can't let anybody see me. Go out, go to the bar and have a drink and talk to people, all right? Just talk. Because uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Because one, you know, I, I, and this is, I'm, I'm, I have no problem saying this. It's good to be complimented. Everyone loves it. And no matter yeah. who says, oh, I, I don't like it. Oh, shy. I, I do get shy, but I love it. I, I love when people say, oh, you're yeah. good in that. Yeah, it's great. And, and, and if you say no, you don't, then you're lying. Simple as that. Like, no, no one hates compliments. Like yeah, exactly. But mo most importantly is... ...what their points of view. Um... And also just to talk about it and just, and to wind down as well. Like, I think it's, I think it's really, actually really important and, and not to get all sort of, you know, mental health and all that sort of stuff, but I think it is really important for, you, for your health to, once you've done a show, to not be on your own and to go and sit with people and wind down and relax. So basically what you're saying vital. is it's important for your health to yeah. go for an alcoholic drink yeah, after a show. It is, it, it is. <laughs> It's important to get drunk, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. I'm not even drunk. Have a cup of tea, like whatever you need to do. Oh, that's my, to that's my cup of tea. <laughs> yeah. Um, and and they've, they've paid for the privilege to see you perform. So, like, yeah. these you can get do is, like... Yeah, exactly. Up and be like, I'm not being funny. That, like, if it's a profit shirt, these are, these are the people, you know, putting money in your pocket. So go out and say hello. <laughs> Simply show, like, show them who you are. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and usually it's families and, and friends and stuff like that. But once in a while, it, it's somebody that's just turned out for a night of theatre, didn't know anything about you. And you, you never know, you might... And it's so good to talk about something other than theatre. Like, I think that's so important. Yeah. You know, to not get wrapped up in, in your own bloody life, to sit down, have a drink and be like, oh, I'm really glad you enjoyed the show. Anyway, what do you guys do? Yeah, talk about it. Talk yeah. about it. Like... Yeah, it's, it is very I do agree with that it's very important to I know it got really preachy all of a sudden yeah <laughs> um, and this Crazy this next one yeah, this next one um, and I, I mean I, I followed this anyway but I, I Mank Maid who I got to work with the past couple of weeks ago uh, really lovely people and they sort of go by the motto of you know if you share my work, I'll share your work. And we should all share each other's work. Totally. And don't, don't be so selfish and self-indulgent to be like, and it, it's just something as simple as a retweet. Do you know what I mean? No harm in a retweet. Yeah, yeah. It's something as simple as that, or, or just helping your mates out by, say if they do a show, just write in a Facebook post and go in, I went to watch such and such thing today, really enjoyed it. Well done, such a body, and well done to the rest of the cast. I think stuff like that's really important. Um, because that's, at the end of the day, level of support, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. And and you know that that's that's nice. That's just a nice thing to do. But also for your own benefit, then people will will then think, well, next time he or she does something, I'm going to share it. You know, and that's that's important for you know, say for people like us who have a theatre company and stuff like that. That's really important because mm -hmm. that's how you know that's how you get your name out there. That's how you know. I think I think we've realised this doing this is that. You know, we didn't purposely keep ourselves to ourselves, but having the opportunity to run this festival and reach out to other theatre companies, yeah, I mean, some some people that we've you know we've we've heard of and we'd like you know we'd love to work with, and you sort of go, oh well, let's message them and see what they say. You never know. And next time, I know I'm, when they do a show, when theatres are finally back open, I know I'm going to go watching that show. Yeah, and I'd I'd hope and pray that they would too to ours. Yeah, precisely. And that's nice to build in a community. Like, like you said, like we've got, we've had so many. Well, like this is totally backing up what you said. Like the amount of companies we've got involved in this festival, like some, like some of them, like you said, like we've either heard of or worked with before, or are quite new. Like 
it's, it, yeah, I, it's, it's that level of support that we should all have. Yeah, for each other. No one's better than anyone else. No, no, no Dif- one is. You're different, uh, different to everyone else. Yes, better. No. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think that's a very nice place to leave it, don't you? I agree. Um. God, I feel like I've rattled on for ages. I'm sorry if that became really, really preachy at the end. Uh, you are I'm just so me. passionate about theatre. Um, I just love theatre. What does theatre mean to you? Um, uh, yeah, I, I, please enjoy the rest of the festival. Uh, there's loads of different stuff coming up today. Um, I know we're, we're going to do an intro video, but I think I, I mean, it sort of goes with what we're just saying then. If you enjoyed it, you know, if you enjoyed if you enjoyed somebody's work, not just ours. You know, we've got other theatre companies coming and doing stuff. If you enjoyed their work, let them know. Write let a Facebook know. post. Write a comment. It's share an, it, please. Yeah, in, in within each performance slash video from each company, we'll put in all that, that social media and, and stuff yeah. on that. So just you know, click click on that and go to it'll take to their Twitter or their yeah. Cause, Instagram. Cause, you know, these guys have done it for us as a favour. You know, they've helped us out. Um, yeah. So at least we can do is sort of you know, encourage people to sort of say, oh, yeah, they were good. I enjoyed that. I, I'm going to I'm gonna like their Facebook page and, and hopefully I find a bit more about them. Precisely. Precisely. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> God, I feel so Nelson Mandela. <laughs> I've got such a preachy mood on me. I don't know what's going on. I never use that. Um, yes. As one Copperberg. Look what happens. <laughs> um, yeah. Thank you very much. See you soon. Um, do you want to say that again? Because you cut off. Did I cut off? Yeah, you went. Thank you for. That, that was it. That's all I wanted to say. That's, that's, me. that's me leaving catchphrase. Um, I'll cut. That. Thank you very much. And uh, we shall see you soon. I went over to you. I'll let you talk for a bit because I'm pretty bad at England. Um, I mean, I think you pretty much said anything. Thank you very much for listening. Um, after this, uh, if you've listened to this, um, we've got Roller Six. Um, oh, we have, yeah, that's brilliant. That's really um, that's what uh, what stick theatre this company. Um, a fantastic piece. And yeah, really good. And again, you know, with this lockdown stuff going on, um, you know, finding creative ways to make theatre, and the way they do it is so so creative. It's really cool. So, um, yeah, if you've if you liked this and you like Jester Bay's work, carry on watching today's videos. And like we said, the next piece we've got is uh, a roll of six, which is what's the theatre. Um, and yeah, I think that's where we say goodbye. So <laughs> <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> Au revoir. Au revoir. Um, was Jim Appel? No, not Jim. Jim Appel isn't that, is it? Um, no. Adios. 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 That's Spanish. Yeah, I know, but we're just doing goodbyes in different... Oh, you've just been... Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Adios. (laughs) Yeah.